And happy small business week too. Okay, just maybe another 30 seconds. So I will get started, Neil, if you happen to see people enter, if you don't mind letting them in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, again, welcome to how to create your own business website. And this is the last uh, program that the library is hosting for San Francisco Small Business Week. And I'm really happy that you're all here uh, joining us for this. I'm super excited. So anyway, happy Small Business Week. All right, so my name is Kirsty. I'm the Small Business Center Librarian. Our department's located on the fourth floor of the main library. Uh, please come visit us. We're open every single day. Um, you can also email us at bizsitech at sfpl.org. Um, and then you can also call us directly at our reference desk, 415-557-4488. Um, I also put out a monthly newsletter. You can sign up for it here, bit.ly slash SFPL newsletter. I list all of the programs related to small business, uh, jobs and careers, personal finance and investing, any kind of special partnerships we have going with other agencies. So it's worth looking at. Um, I you know, spend a lot of time on that. <laughs> All right, um, okay, so I wanna just recap this week. So the first program we had was email marketing for beginners and that was on Tuesday with the Small Business Development Center. If any of you attended that, let us know in the chat how you uh, liked it. Um, then later that day, we hosted the Office of Small Business and Martha Yanez uh, did a fabulous overview of how to start a business in San Francisco. And then the next day, we had the amazing Eddie Tang from the SF LGBT, LGBT Center pre present on an introduction to business plan. And he was amazing. Yesterday, we hosted a Renaissance Women's Business Center for Kickstart Your Business. And Isla talked about the pros and cons about entrepreneurship and also how to access their services because they're an amazing organization as well. And then finally today, yay, how to create your own business website with Neil Torfiel. So just a small disclaimer that the information presented today is intended for educational purposes and does not constitute professional, financial, or legal advice. And then finally, um, please remain muted during the presentation. You can type your questions in the chat, and then we have enabled auto transcription if you need closed captioning on your screen. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen and introduce you to Neil. Neil Torfiel is a member of the LGBT community, first-generation Filipino-American and native San Franciscan. Torfiel, sorry, Neil is the founder of Summer, a digital creative studio on a mission to support the vision of social impact organizations, organizations through digital storytelling. They focus on furthering social justice, equity, and inclusion through virtual event streaming, digital strategy, and online experiences. Prior to starting his own creative firm, he was an experienced designer researcher and has consulted as a digital strategist for social entrepreneurs across Southeast Asia and East Africa. He's worked across tech, creative agency, social impact and vehicle autonomy, including Uber, DreamWorks, Samsung, Oracle, City and County of San Francisco, SF Department of Health, Epsilon and Apple. Please help me welcome Neil Torfiel. Thank you so much, Kirsty. Really appreciate that. Hi, everybody. Uh, well, um, what was it? Yesterday was Cinco de Mayo, so I hope y'all are um, didn't drink too much and <laughs> you're coming to this webinar uh, when, with full focus. Um, and uh, yes, happy Friday. I hope y'all had a really great week. Um, and my, we're right in the middle of spring, so um, I'm hoping y'all are just about as ready for the weekend as I am. So thank you for that introduction, Kirsty. Um, and let me go ahead and start off here by sharing my screen as well. And me usually very prepared, realize I didn't have any slides for this. I literally just put these slides together in the first minute <laughs> of this webinar. So here we go. 
Okay. I'm going to go ahead and open my chat window just in case. Let me see if I, there are any specific. Um, okay, here. Okay, fantastic. Well, welcome everybody. My name is again is Neil Torfield. Uh, I founded a, a creative studio called Summer. We're based out here in San Francisco, and Summer specifically focuses on and supports so social impact organizations around digital experience, digital strategy, uh, and we do that through creating digital applications, supporting live streams, and doing video productions. There's a lot we do in the creative space to be able to support these uh, these organizations, and and most most importantly, uh, the need is great. Um, and with that, my background comes from graphic design. Uh, I went to school for graphic design. A lot of graphic design um, through the early 2000s culminated into web design, and through that became user experience design. So my core career has been built around experience design. And with that, you know, we have mobile, we have mobile applications, and of course, the topic of today is creating our small business website. Uh, so this is very, very bare bones, basic um, website. We're going to utilize templates. And in order to do so, we have to use a platform to be able to do that. Um, so for the entire webinar, I'll be using Squarespace. And there are a variety of different platforms you can utilize, Wix.com being one of them. Um, uh, WordPress.com is another one as well. Um, you can also work with developers if you want to do something a lot more custom. But again, for the purposes of this webinar, we're going to create a really basic website, uh, plug in some e-commerce and to be able to actually create a store. And we can do that uh, in the span of this 30 minutes. So it's like a cooking show. You know, I have something that I'm making right in front of y'all, but I also have something prepared on the side just in case. Uh, so with that, let me go ahead and first and just ask everybody, how many have you, uh, and just please type it into the chat, how many of you have any experience at all working within websites? And you can sum, um, yeah, you can sum and maybe not at all, or um, you know, maybe some of you are expert level, which is probably some of that. Okay, great. Good, getting some really good responses here. Years ago, yeah. You know, digital and everything tech is just work, it just evolved at the speed of light. So, uh, yeah. But a lot of the, you know, the, the, the concepts still are retained. Okay, good. Um, next question here is what do you want to get out of this? And, uh, you can just quickly type something in the chat and I'll just scan through it just to make sure that what I do have in my agenda, if there's any uh, meanderings or lefts or rights in my agenda that I need to take to be able to uh, deepen work a little more deeper in, I can do that. Okay, are you doing it right? Okay. <laughs> Tips and pitfalls to work for, great. Concrete steps, which is gonna be part of this agenda as well. Common mistakes, ideas and tools. That's definitely gonna be a huge part of this. Okay, cool. Wording and language, great, okay. So I, won't, I won't actually touch on copy specifically and copy strategy, if that's Helen, that's what you're hoping to get through this, but Happy to be able to, um, you know, Kirsty. I'm sure you're going to share something after this, and if not, I'm more than welcome to be able to share my email address. So, anybody who has any lingering questions uh, that I may not have covered on this webinar, please feel free to, to email me directly. Okay, good. And Thomas says he just took a, or you just took a WordPress class recently, so that's good. So you have some sort of um sense around utilizing these type of platforms and these editors cool all right so let's go ahead and get started here's our agenda okay so we just did an introduction we're going to walk walk through a best-in-class audit so a lot of what design and design engineers and 
web web designers and designers in the application space usually do in the first stages is to do a ton of research, which we don't have time for. Um, but one of those frameworks we use is called a best in class audit. So we'll go through that really quickly. Then we'll dive in right into the platform itself. So given what we understand about specific websites in our audit, we'll go ahead and apply that into some templates. We'll talk about logo. We'll build a store really quickly again, and then we'll go ahead and create a domain name. So again, really basic concepts here uh, and within the realm of Squarespace. So if you haven't already, um, let me go ahead and stop sharing here and I'm going to go ahead and switch over. So you haven't already, uh, Squarespace is a wonderful website. Again, there are a variety of different ones out there that you can use. Um, Wix.com is a huge competitor of, or an alternative to Squarespace. But what's great about these platforms or what we used to call WYSIWYG, which literally is an acronym for what you see is what you get, is there are a variety of different templates you can already use. And with that, you have a bunch of plugins you can use already. So a lot of these organizations already work with e-commerce organizations, search engine optimization organizations, they already have a lot of this stuff built in. So you don't really have to start from scratch. Um, and yeah, a lot of the stuff is already built in, right? So uh, Squarespace is great. It's in, in terms of what you can utilize and get something up and quickly uh, going. So um, I definitely would recommend Squarespace. Um, of course, Wix.com is a huge one as well. Y'all are um, may not be familiar with that. Uh, WordPress.com. So WordPress uh, is, uh, they actually have an org and WordPress started as a, uh, an actual kind of a, um, a piece of software, I guess is the best by way to say it's a piece of software that you can, you can install into your domain or your, your web domain and you can run it um, essentially uh, integrated into your web server. And what they've done is they've also created a self-hosted, what we say is self-hosted, meaning that they've created a solution that is very similar in the vein for Wix.com and also Squarespace. Oop, well, I guess we're looking at a website here. Let me see if I can quickly, okay. Okay, well, <laughs> you're looking at the innards <laughs> and the developer version or the uh, the, the back end of uh, everything that's on my wordpress.com site here. Let's see if I can quickly log out. There you go. Okay, so that's wordpress.com. So again, another really interesting competitor here within that space. And again, they have templates you can utilize um, and plugins you can pull into to be able to help support a variety of different functions you need to be able to create on your website. Okay, uh, but again, for the purpose of this, we'll go ahead and just um, use Squarespace. We'll dive into that real quick. Before we get there, let's do a best in class audit. So what is that? So best in class audit is a great way for us. And you know, I'm sure all of us are uh, digital folks. We, we're on our Facebook and our Instagrams. We browse through the internet for hours at end, if not days on end, right? So we have, I feel, a sensibility that we have built around what is good web design and what is bad web design. So essentially a best in class audit is, let's look at some really great websites that we either idealize or that we think have really good design. Um, and most importantly, not on, not only identify what is good design and what are the good components of a good design, but what are the bad components of that, right? And a lot of this really culminates to user experience. When we think about bad design, it just it doesn't work well, or maybe the font or the text is too small, or um, the positioning of the navigation, the buttons aren't really working what it should. So a lot of that is within the realm of experience design. And so let's take a quick look um, again. So fictitiously, what we're going to create here is a pizza restaurant. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to dive in and we're going to create a pizza restaurant or a pizza website um, that sells pizzas online. So first and foremost, let's take a look at some really good websites. And I think a couple of these would be really familiar to you. Um, 
course, let's pull up and we can just quickly Google some pizza websites, Pizza Hut, big, big corporate. Um, it's good to kind of take a good slice of a variety of different websites, ones that are either corporate websites, maybe some that are local, and maybe some that are really jazzy and snazzy. Um, we won't really go on that last end, but here's you know a, a few really good websites that I've been able to pull up. So again, corporate, um, they typically have a lot of uh, funding. Um, they have a huge probably design team behind this. If not, they've been able to employ an actual agency to be able to build these things for them. So I definitely would recommend take a look at some corporate websites and see how their websites look like. Um, especially when you think about positioning yourself and your brand and your business in the larger context of the competitive environment, it's really good to look at websites and see what they're doing. What are they doing right? And what doing to God wrong? But most importantly, what can you copy? Yes, because in, in the design world, um, nothing is actually being created. <laughs> Everything is either being reinterpreted or essentially copied. And so Picasso says it's really great, right? Good artists copy, but great artists steal. So the good point here, <laughs> point to be made, is to take a look at these websites and look at what they're doing really well and essentially steal those concepts. I wouldn't say steal the actual imagery. You don't wanna do that. Uh, don't steal the actual text itself, but look at the different components that pull together that make a really good website. So website, so I'll just quickly call these out and there's a framework I'll show you in just a second to help actually uh, form what this um, starts to look like. So with Pizza Hut, we have uh, navigation at the top, you can see there's a logo. Again, I'm sure everybody on this call has browsed through a million websites and there's a typical framework. You have navigation on the top. You usually have some really big image um, that attracts the eye and that we call that a hero image. Um, and for that purpose, it is the, it's a piece of hero content. So it's the first thing that your eye lands on when you're looking at a website. And Pizza Hut does something really interesting here. There's a sign in in the top right corner. You have a cart on the, on the, top, uh, on the top right as well. Big hero image, something promotional. You can order now. You can see that button really highlighted here. You can find a store near you. You have some featured stuff. In this case, you have some featured um, um, uh, food, um, maybe it's characteristics of, of their actual products. Uh, you can see more. Um, I'm also getting really hungry. <laughs> it's almost lunchtime and I haven't eaten yet. So don't mind me if I'm kind of salivating here as I'm going through this. Um, so a bunch of food, popular pizzas, uh, rounds it out to the bottom. We have something about loyalty, right? We have like hot rewards. And then they also have a call to action for um, um, trying to hire specific folks. So something around careers and hiring. And then finally, at the very, very bottom, we call this the mega footer. Uh, and every single, this used to be, uh, and still is a trend in web design where you just have a huge amount of content on the bottom, which basically is navigation. You have social, and then if they happen to have a mobile app, you can download it right here. Um, this is like, we call this a mega footer uh, in opposed to a mini footer, which some websites have, which is just a strip. Um, and I'll show you a couple comp components or iterations of this specific design, but you know, let's, that's Pizza Hut. And of course we can go into the menu and look at a variety of different pages that they built here. But uh, again, you know, in, in the interest of time, we only have time. Let's just take a look at the homepage. Um, Roundtable, they've just recently, I think in the past year or two, did a redesign. So you can see that they have a redesigned logo. Again, there's some similarities with Pizza Hut. There's something about a menu or specials. Uh, they can also um, elevate their locations. They have a bunch of stores. Again, there's login and a way to be able to access your order or your cart. So in terms of frameworks, there's a, a very similar uh, um, kind of uh, framework, or there's a, there's a very similar sense as to how they're designing this top navigation bar. Right? It's very, very similar. You have a hero image, super huge. Uh, this is full bleed. So it goes from one end to the next. 
uh, you have an order now, um, which again catches the eye and you can really see how they're utilizing the color red here. Um, Right, so hero image, we scroll down a little bit further, you have something about a loyalty program, you can download their app. Interestingly, they also have merch. So if you're really into Roundtable, you can buy a t-shirt or a cap. <laughs> uh, you can also see that they have similar colors that they're using for uh, what we call as a CTA or a call to action. It's essentially a button. And it's, it's parts of a website that you want to be able to call attention to your consumer to be able to click on. So a bunch of CTAs here, they're all the same color. Order now. You can see that the, the actual text in the button is all caps. So it kind of just yells at you, right? Just grabs your attention. Um, pizza royalty, so you can order now. Scrolling a little bit further. So that they actually kind of make use of a, not necessarily a mega footer here, but uh, it's kind of a medium footer, I would call this. <laughs> it's not a mega, it's not necessarily a mini footer, but it's someone and something in between. That's a quick kind of scroll through that. Goat Hill Pizza is one of my favorites in Petraro Hill. They have three locations. And um, you know what's interesting here is they also have a uh, logo on the top left, navigation on the top right, um, and their locations in that footer. Right, so pretty simple. Uh, and in terms of their page, they push you out directly to the store itself. So slightly different in terms of concept, uh, but essentially the, the the pieces are very similar here. It, right, it just goes right into a um, uh, what we call an order flow or a um, a sale flow. Okay, and then finally, again, one of my favorite. Um, pizza places here in San Francisco. And I started eating pizzas when they were still in their food trucks and now they have their own location, which I'm really excited for, Del Popolo. Um, is that their homepage? Yep, oh, here we go. Okay, so full bleed image, hero image as we call it. You know, it just really entices you, makes you salivate as I am right now. Scroll a little further down and we can see that that's it. Um, really what they're trying to do here is just to pull you in to show you uh, rather than taking action and selling things, they're really more invoking the, the, the beauty of pizza making, right? Which is a lot of what they do. Uh, you can also see that their navigation here is kind of encapsulated into this navigation item here. So you would have to click on it. Um, I, you know, this is pretty typical of, of mobile websites. Um, whether it's on a tablet or on your mobile device. Um, and um, I would say it's not good practice to do this on a regular desktop website because you want to be able to have your menu items and your navigation items right there and then, uh, unless there's some specific point or design point you're trying to make here. I, I, in terms of Del Popolo, I you know, they're saying, hey, we're making these really beautiful pizzas. Maybe in terms of their company philosophy or their business philosophy, they're really thinking through about uh, more the experience of the pizza rather than let's just get people to purchase, right? So that could be a reason why they're putting the navigation element on, in hidden within this, uh, we call this a burger menu, <laughs> because you have the top and you have the bottom, you have the middle here, which is typically th it's for three lines, it looks like a burger. So we call it a, a burger or a hamburger menu. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, typically I think when you're working with, you design your website, um, there are a variety of different um, stop points. Uh, you have a website just designed for a desktop, you have a website that's designed for tablet, and then you have a website that's also designed for mobile. There's like three different stop points. Uh, if you're working with a Squarespace or a Wix.com, or a variety of different other uh, website um, creation platforms. Uh, typically, you just design for one and they'll adjust that automatically for you, which is good. Uh, but if you are going to do it manually and again, actually hire, hire a developer to do that for you, that's something they'll have to develop, they'll develop um, specific to those um, uh, viewports, as we call it. You have a viewport for desktop, you have a viewport for tablet, and you have a viewport for mobile. Um, ideally, you design for one and it's what we say fluid. So the design is just fluid across all different 
a viewport. So that's uh, probably a little more information that's needed for this webinar, but uh, a, a little uh, tidbit there. Um, let me just quickly check on time. Okay, good. We're 11.25. And um, I think, Chrissy, we're going to do about 15 minutes of Q&A at the end. Is that right? Right before the end of the hour? If that's what, you, if it's okay with you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, so uh, so folks, please hold your questions until the end. I do see some folks kind of raising their hands, um, and I'm not currently reviewing through the the questions. So um, I'm just going to keep on going, and then feel free to just raise your hand toward the end, and we'll chat a little bit more. And if I don't get your question, um, uh, you know, we'll share my my email address to y'all and we can definitely connect offline. Okay, uh, one more part of this is the best in class audit actually is going through and auditing the website itself. So let's hear, okay, cool. Um, you can do this in a design, you know, in a Canva or a design application or do it in a notebook. But you know, essentially what you wanna be able to do is take a look at that website and you can see this is a little more fancier. I've been able to get a screenshot of it and identify the different parts um, that pull together um, that specific page. And so, you know, just as I mentioned, you have navigation in the top left, you have a login, you, have, you can be able to order or access the cart. You have this huge Im hero image here. You got this big, order now button here. It's also important to be able to, to, uh, to note down where those buttons lie. Um, so we have an order now, for instance, here, we also have duplicate that. Yeah. And we might have here in terms of the loyalty program, you can learn more. You just get the, the, the essentially the, the, um, the skeleton of the website. You have a buy now here, right? And we can just go on and on. Um, and it's really important to kind of just get the overall concept of that web page, um, so that you can have a, a much more judicial eye as to how these components are starting to feel, come together. And once you have this basis and this foundation, that's what's going to allow you to now go into. Uh, a template and identify in those template, what are the various parts of that template that is congruent to the type of product or the service you're selling, but also keeping in mind the competitive landscape and see what other folks are doing, right? Kind of pull all that together. You can see in this uh, specific uh, best in class audit i've looked at a couple websites and this is actually for summer's website so uh you know i'm taking a look at different parts of it we have a reel and introduction and description how um what's the change engine and the process different parts of media you know you can just go through and outline all these different areas and then compare and contrast here's website here's another website and here's another website and then you can try to see, okay, maybe I do need a hero I mentioned the top. Maybe I do need an approach summary, something that probably talks about our strategy as a company, maybe some imagery about the, the products that we're creating and so forth and so forth, right? And that's gonna feed us now into our template. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through um, some really quick res uh, resources that I've used here um, to create a website and um, you know, one thing I really love about Squarespace is they have a ton of templates you can use. I'm just going to create this one food one. And, you know, you can see there are a variety of different designs we can use, uh, but they all have access to the same components. And uh, we'll see that in just a second here. So just going to, you know, Vance, I think is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and start with Vance and get this set up. By the way, um, not that this is a plug for Squarespace. Uh, I do not work for them, nor am I getting paid by Squarespace. <laughs> uh, but they are running a, a promotion at the moment for May. I think it's 20% off, right? So you might want to consider that if that's uh, if Squarespace is a ideal solution for you. So our business is called Picasso Pizza. 
Okay, just gonna go ahead and click uh, here, a couple introductions on how to be able to utilize uh, their editor, but it's super easy. You can see you have a little assistant here. So if you have any questions and you can start with an intro video and a variety of different um, yep, instructions on how to uh, change your site logo and add and delete pages. Uh, it's pretty comprehensive. They did a really good job here. Uh, with this specific template, you can see that it's already pre-made. Um, we can add additional pages to this. You can see that store is going to be one of those, and I'll get to that in a second. But with this specific template, we already have an, our story. We have a menu, photos. You can make a reservation. Um, and uh, here's an example of one of those plugins. So they're, you, you know, they're working with our friends over at OpenTable, and you can utilize OpenTable as a reservation platform, and you can integrate that right in. So they have a bunch of, again, partners that they utilize and, um, to be able to create some of these blocks and integrations into the, uh, the website uh, design. Well, so just starting out at home. Okay, so the first thing is what we've done is pick the template. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through and go and design. You can also go to site styles if you want to change the font. You have a variety of different fonts you can use and you can get as deep as you want to be able to customize headings and so forth. And like, for instance, we can change this. And let's say we want to have a different emotion for the type of font that we're using here. Maybe Adonis is one of them that has a, yeah, sure. Okay, that's a good serif font. And we're gonna go ahead and save that. You can change the colors if you'd like to. Um, but now, actually for our next step here, let's go ahead and quickly create a logo. Uh, as, a, as a person, as a designer, <laughs> I don't necessarily promote uh, any of these, these these ways to quickly generate <laughs> a logo, although there, there, there are resources out there to be able to help you do that. Um, and I can also see that Kirsty was using Canva for her slides and canva.com also has a logo maker. So, you know, here's one I just quickly created, but it's exactly the same concept for um, um, Squarespace is you start off with some templates and you can just go in and edit and choose a variety of different elements that you'd like to be able to add in. Uh, to be able to make uh, whatever you're trying to make, you know, whether it's a logo or you're trying to create slides or, you know, even printable material you can use canva.com for. Squarespace actually has a, a logo maker. So, you know, we can just quickly create this and I'll walk you through that and say it's Picasso pizza. It's pretty nice and minimalist if you're into that. Uh, that's all about Squarespace and you'll see that through their logo maker, it's pretty, uh, plain and minimalist design, lots of white space, uh, but you know the the concept is still very similar. Um, I think you're gonna love this tag in here, Picasso pizza. I add a tagline: Good pizza is copy, great pizza is a steal. Yeah, okay. We can quickly look for some pizza slices. Let's use this one. There we go. And maybe we want to. Just position it in a certain way. Yeah. They give you a preview of what that could look like, for instance, on your business cards and your, your uh, potential website. If you're going to create some merchandise, that might be looking what it looked like. Uh, you can save it. You can literally just download it immediately. So, again, there's a lot of good ways you can quickly create these things. Um, Canva, of course, is the same as well. You can share and you're able to export that right out and download that into a variety of different um, formats um, that's available to you. Uh, Canva is free right out right at the door, but if you want to be able to access uh, more of their images, um, you can see that there's a pro tag here. So it'll cost, I believe, about $14, $13.99 or $14 a month um, to be able to access that in a variety of different other features um, beyond that. But I, I know the logo maker and just the baseline features for Canva is free out of that. So it's pretty cool. Um, so just returning back to our website here. Um, let's open that up. Right, and this is really quick and easy. We can, let's say, go edit. 
Um, act oh, so you can actually see, this is the one I've already created. Where's the one? Okay, there we go. Let's go back to our pages and go back to our home. You have this portion here on the right side, which is the preview of the website, and you have the left, which is the administrative view that allows you to be able to access and navigate through a variety of um, um, features within your website. So for instance, the different types of pages, as I mentioned, you can add here. Uh, if we're gonna edit this page, I can click edit. Uh, I'm gonna edit the site header, and I'm gonna show you how we can quickly just add in the logo that we've created. So I've done this previous to this already, and I've already created this logo. So I can just quickly add it in. I'm gonna take a look at how that pops right in. You can see I can also adjust the height of this logo. Um, and as I mentioned, there are different viewports that we typically have to keep in mind when we're designing for. Mobile is one of those viewports. So we can actually change and look at what this looks like here on a mobile device. And you can quickly do that through just this button in the top right corner. You can see that it's uploaded our beautiful minimalist logo for Picasso Pizza. And let's say I just wanna make that a little bigger. And voila, there you go. Save that out. Cool. Um, I think we have a couple more minutes here before we start to wrap up. So I'm going to try to fly through this as quickly as I can. Um, let's actually dive into yeah the e-commerce portion because we actually want to sell things, right? It's a business website. So maybe it's not just describing our services, but maybe there's a specific product, in this case, pizza that we want to sell. So I'm going to quickly create a store. And again, um, you know, this function exists across all of their templates. And I'm just gonna pick one of these stores here. It's gonna load in as a template for me. We're just gonna call that pizzas. And there you go. You can see that it, it automatically adds it into the navigation. And because it is a template, it already has some stuff that's preloaded. I can go in here and delete some of these that I don't need. So we delete all that. Okay. Actually, you know, even better. I'm going to delete all them out. All right. And let's just go ahead and create a product. So this is a physical product. Actually, let me just go back there just so can y'all can also see the variety of different things. Is this a physical product? Is it a service? Are we creating a membership? Are we trying to schedule something, creating gift cards, digital downloads for digital um, products? You know, it's pretty comprehensive in terms of what you can sell on Squarespace. Uh, in this case, it is a, uh, a product, it's a food. For this, we'll call it, say, Market Street Margarita. I love margarita pizzas. Um, I'm a vegetarian, so I can eat. Um, I'm an ovo vegetarian, so I can eat. Uh, Milk products, uh, I do love eggs, but beyond that, I am a vegetarian. I can go ahead and add in an image. So I'll have a lot of these stuff already preset, right? So um, I have a beautiful image of a margarita pizza. So let me actually drop uh, a really cool website if y'all aren't Don't know about this. This is called unsplash.com. Uh, they are they provide a lot of high resolution images, which is really important in website design. You don't want something that's all um, low quality or low resolution. You definitely want to have some really really great imagery, and all this is free, uh, widely free um, and free licensed. So good resource to be able to use. Uh, if you are definitely selling images or selling product, you want to create, you actually want to take photographs of your actual product itself. You definitely don't just download it. <laughs> uh, that's super key. Um, but yeah, so let's just create this product here real quick. Have an image for it. Um, you know, there are different variants for this in terms of size. We have small, medium, large, and let's have an XL as well. Okay, create that. 
I'm going to edit those all and San Francisco prices, right? So how much is small? Say $14, 18, 24. I'm sure it's more than this now, but I really haven't purchased any pizzas out there anytime soon, but maybe an Excel is about $30, yeah, give or take. Um, so you can see under inventory, this is how we can select and create a variety of different variants of our product. Uh, we can track that as well. We, there's an inventory manager um, with Squarespace, so you can definitely do all that in the back end. Um, if you're really concerned about SEO and SEM, um, they it's again built into the template and into the code itself, and you can track metrics uh, within Squarespace again. So kind of just really a one one solution that does it all. Okay, so we can go ahead and save that. And we can start to see what that looks like when it's um, showing up. Okay, that's probably taking its time there, but just to be able to quickly show you here, um, this other site that I created right before. Right, so we can add in, this is exactly what I did uh, in that step is to create this in my inventory and we can create and add in specific products. Uh, you can see the different sizes that we can select here and it'll adjust the price that's given that and I can go ahead and add to cart. Um, you can also see here with the actual homepage itself. So just to come back to here, our homepage. Let me just show you what the template looks like. So there's an image. We have some navigation elements at the top, hero image, something about what uh, this specific company or this business does, um, a little history, scrolling a little down. Uh, here's where we start to approach the footer. We have some information about the actual location itself. There's a newsletter. You can actually delete these things and we can go in here. And for instance, we, if we don't want this, we can literally just delete this out. So there's a lot of flexibility um, with these type of templates. And then finally, we have the mini footer at the very bottom. So let me show you what that actually starts to look at like going in here. Um, yeah, so you can see that I've just basically swapped a lot of this information that's in here. Um, you know, for instance, if this is a section that I don't need, I can just delete that out really quickly. Uh, bell peppers are the typical accompaniment to great pizzas. Um, sorry for all for any of you who don't like bell peppers. Uh, here's a little address and some hours, and finally uh, her um, her footer right at the very bottom. Um, let's see if there's anything actually here else to really point out as we start to wrap up. Domain name, very important. Yes. So let me just go back up to Squarespace. What's great, again, uh, typically when you're building a MANL website, you have to think about a domain registrar and you have a godaddy.com, Google domains, there's a variety of different domain registrars. With Squarespace, you can do it right here, which makes it so much more easier. You can see I can go into domains, hit get a domain, and I can start to type exactly what that is. Uh, and for instance, this is called Picasso Pizza. Uh, there is, uh, what's really cool and within the last decade or decade and a half is the registrars have been able to really increase the amount of uh, suffixes that we can use uh, rather than just .com. You know, you can have uh, .biz, uh, the ones that we're familiar with, .org, uh, .com obviously, and now we have like .pizza. And if I were to add that in, you can see that that's ready to then purchase. So by just quickly changing the domain name here, we can quickly customize and make something that's probably much more um, appropriate for the type of business we're trying to create. I think that we can do a picassopizza.com. You can see that it's unavailable and there's a variety of different ones that we can utilize that are being suggested here. Food and drink, do drink domains for all of you who are running uh, food businesses, dot beer, dot farm, uh, dot kitchen, dot pizza, there you go, dot fish. So a lot of really creative prefixes or suffixes that we can use now, which is really fun, dot wine. And the list goes on and on and on. Uh, and then if you were gonna create or purchase this domain through Squarespace, um, it is locked to Squarespace 
and you can migrate your domains um, from one registrar to another. So whether if you're going through Google domains or GoDaddy or DreamHost, a variety of different registrars you can use to actually register the domain, you can transfer them. Uh, and ideally you're transferring them to the service that is actually hosting your website. So in this case, Squarespace is hosting our website. Uh, just keep it really easy for yourself. Register your domain on Squarespace as well. Um, I think that's the easiest way to be able to, to get into that. Um, so I've named a couple of those registrars just in case you do want to do some shopping. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. We set up our online store. Picasso Pizza. Let me see if I actually want to, I want to make sure that I actually walk you all through that. Yeah, last point here is about the e-commerce. So we, we, we talked about creating the actual products and uh, creating inventory. So you can track your inventory here, right? Again, super easy. I've created these products really quickly. You can add a product. Is it a physical product? You can, for, you can choose what type of product is and add it in. You can see that I've already done so and I've assigned a price to it. And you can actually can tra track the amount of stock that you have uh, and you have SKU numbers associated with that. So, um, what's really cool about Squarespace as well is your ability to be able to, here's our orders. So if you have any orders coming in, you can track it here. Um, the other part is the actual store page itself. So we can go into pizza, right? Choose one of your products. Let's just test this out. I'm really hungry. So let's say like we're going to get an, an Excel. We can add this to cart. Uh, and this is the, again, the sale flow or the buy flow that we're going through the variety of different steps in order to get your customer to actually purchase something. Um, to open this up here. Here we go. Here's your little cart. You can see that I actually added that cart and we can quickly just check out. I believe they're using Stripe. So again, a lot of this um, Stripe is their uh, order processor. Um, and so you're able to, uh, if, if this looks familiar, you know that this is a website that's using um, Squarespace. So again, you know, you can do this really quickly. And um, there are uh, some fees associated with that. They do have a fee schedule, Squarespace does, and I believe they're using a Stripe to, um, to do a lot of these transactions. So it's really important to go through these websites and review through what their fee schedules are um, so that, um, yeah, you're, you're trying to net as much as you can in terms of uh, uh, your products. Cool. So that's how to quickly pull together a business website. Um, we've been able to create products. Uh, we've done a best in class analysis of some really uh, great websites out there that ran the gam gamut of uh, corporate websites to local websites or local businesses. Um, and then identify exactly what components you want to be able to steal <laughs> or copy into your website design. We also, you know, we spent a lot of time in Squarespace to then identify um, the, the, the type of template you want to be able to utilize, how easy it is to take your template and to customize and, and change it um, to be able to focus directly on what you're trying to achieve with your business. We also took quickly took a look at domains, uh, and then we also took a look at um, selling. So what does the cart look like, the buy flow look like, and also trying to track um, inventory. So quite a lot there in 40, at 50 minutes. Uh, we have about 11 minutes left on the call. And I think we'll go ahead and go into Q&A. Thank you, Neil. That was great. I thought it was super helpful to review like how websites are, are organized and like getting the framework down, um, you know, all the elements of a good website. I wanted to mention that every month uh, we host the San Francisco Small Business Development Center for a website audit. So I think that would be a compliment, nice complimentary um, workshop um, to what Dale just covered because uh, Dennis Yu reviews how to increase engagement and will tell you also like 
what to do to your website to, to do that. So um, the next one is on Wednesday, May 18th at two o'clock. And it's a recurring program. So if you miss this Wednesday, the 18th, you can come in June and we do it every month. So just know that that's available to you. Um, so I'm gonna, I saw a question in the chat. Um, so this one has to do with um, Google, a Google site URL now. Mm -hmm. So she's asking, can a Google site URL be customized where the URL address doesn't start with sites.google or is that not changeable? Uh, that's right. Really good question. So the way that Google Sites work is unfortunately you cannot, unless you are registering an actual domain through Google Google Registrar as a, as a domain. So when Google Sites, um, the difference between Google Sites and an actual like hosting your own website is Google Sites it, uh, has their own servers um, and they have assigned specific URLs or domains to, to Google Sites. Uh, so basically your website is contained within the ecosystem of Google Sites. Um, so you're, you, you're unable to change a URL. Now what you might be able to do, and I, haven't, I don't have a lot of experience with Google Sites, you might be able to export your site out somehow. Um, so you may wanna look into ways you can uh, export either the metadata or uh, the entire site itself. It's a little tricky. You might have to work with a developer to be able to do this, but try to see if you can export it out. That way you can pull it into, let's say, a Squarespace or maybe a WordPress uh, or any of these other uh, types of websites if, if it's really important for you to have a custom URL. Okay, thank you, Neil. Uh, someone in the chat asked, um, and if we can't answer this here, we can. I can email them later. But the question is, if you have a trademark, do you also need a domain? Good, good question. Um, if you have a trademark, do you also need a domain? Um, these are entirely um, different concepts. Um, I'm not a trade trademark attorney, so I can't really speak to. Uh, the legalese or any of the le legal ramifications around getting a trademark and then trying to find a URL that sounds like that trademark. Um, but these are mutually exclusive, right? You can definitely create a website and register a specific domain. Domains are not trademarked. Um, you can go out there and find a domain, think about the next Google or the Facebook, purchase that domain and hold on to that domain for 10 years, hoping, hoping that someone or some company that's gonna blow up to a trillion dollars is gonna need that domain and they will pay you out for that domain. There's an entire, <laughs> there's an entire uh, marketplace for, for that. And unfortunately, um, it, that does exist, uh, fortunately and maybe unfortunately. So uh, no, again, these are two definitely separate things, but ideally, yes, to your point, if you are trying to create a business you want your business name, or I guess in, in this to this point, your trademark name to be as closely related um, to the actual domain itself. Thank you, Neil. Okay, another question is: Is it possible to insert a plugin like Google Translate on Squarespace? Ah, really good question. Let me look into that. Um, and I, I guess a, 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 another question here was what how would you want to utilize Google Translate? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about captions. So Google Translate, um, I believe so. I have seen a couple websites that allow you to translate um, on the fly of your website. I know Chrome does this. Um, Chrome can translate uh, foreign languages into English or back. And there are plugins for the actual browser itself, but really good question. I'll follow up on that offline uh, if there's an actual plugin. Thank you. All right, there is another question here. It's from, um, oh, how much does it cost in total to build a website and then host it in a domain? Ah, uh, really great question. It really ranges. Um, if it's any evident with this webinar, uh, you can probably get a website. If you're going to use your own blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> to invest into building a website, uh, you can definitely get a website out in less than $500. Um, and that's with the actual domain cost, hosting the website for, let's say, a year. I believe for Squarespace, it's 
for a business plan, it's about $14 a month. And then the annual is I think around uh, $120 with some business functionality um, and e-commerce functionality. And then you do want to also invest, let's say you have products to sell, you wanna invest in a photographer to take those photos for you for these products if you're not gonna do it yourself. Uh, you know, it can range anywhere again from about $500 to get that right out the door if you're going to invest into it yourself or if you're going to pay someone, a developer, if you have a, a, a much more deeper need to, to develop um, buy flows um, and maybe you, you want to create a much more manual website or it's an online service of some sort, um, that, that can go into tens of tens of thousands. Thank you. Um, someone was asking about scrolling versus separate pages. What is your take on that? Ah, really good one. Um, I I think I really feel as within the digital domain, we're all used to the endless scroll, um, uh, for good or for worse. Uh, we all know the the endless scroll that is Instagram and Facebook and a variety of different social media. Uh, platforms. And I, I would definitely say, think more strategically about the content that you want to be able to surface to your audience. Uh, if it may, if, if it also depends on the breadth of information or content that you're trying to create. Um, if it's a lot of content, um, I definitely would say that for a majority of folks, scrolling through a deep website is totally fine. Um, I think if any of y'all own Apple products, you know that their, uh, their detail pages on their specific products are long, endless scrolls. And they just happen to also incorporate a lot of interactive elements into that as well. Like these, you know, the phone just blows up in your face and then it just all of these animations and things like that. Uh, but if the intent is to create something that's much more concise and you want to be able to communicate and, and create copy that is much more concise, then you might also consider something that's page by page. Um, and a lot of websites utilize carousels, right? Uh, left and right to be able to shift the viewer or to shift the content um, one at a time. So there's a variety of different techniques that could be used uh, in both ways. But again, it really does really depends on the type of content that you want to be able to um, put on the website. Thank you, Neil. I think we have time for one more question. And um, that I saw one in the chat. Someone is wondering, how do you add an option to change the page language, for example, from Spanish to English, English to Spanish? Right. So this probably also um, is related to the previous question about installing or integrating like a Google Translate into the, the website itself. Um, I'm aware of ways that you can, uh, the way I've approached this in the past, and this is more of a custom website, and you can probably do this, actually, you can get away with it with a square site website, is creating a navigation element in the top right corner, because we do see this, and I just got back from a European trip, and so, you know, you can toggle from Italian to English to Spanish to German. And those are essentially just different web, different web, um, web pages within a site. And the way that uh, most companies, uh, especially corporate companies, uh, approach this is you literally have a copy of an entire website that's been translated. It's important not to use an auto translator because the auto translator doesn't capture nuances in language. And so if, for instance, you're having something in English and then you're gonna auto translate this. This is also to the, the same point about uh, integrating Google Translate. Um, there are nuances in the, in the language that just doesn't translate correctly. And that's off-putting to a lot of native speaking folks who speak those languages. So if you are considering translating content for your website, and I'm thinking more broadly, translating all the content in your website to be able to help um, target a specific language or a specific country, it's important to do so holistically and to to also hire a translator to be able to do that for you, a native uh, native speaking uh, translator. 
Um, so in terms of the, like the larger context of the website, you would have created, let's say your website has 10 web pages. All that is going to be in English. You hit French and all that is going to be in French. So you have another 10 pages that's translated to French. You have another 10 pages that's translated to English or to German, for instance. So you have, you have in, in this case, 30 pages that is um, just within the context of this one website. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, but I think what's key here again is to leverage uh, and hire a an actual uh, linguist or a, a translator to be able to do that for you. Thank you, Neil. Well, I, I just wanna thank you so much for your uh, presentation. I think we all learned a lot and I'm kind of amazed too at how easy it is to actually start your own website pretty easily using some of the tools that you've demonstrated. Um, so appreciate your time and sharing your expertise with us. Um, did you want to um, let people know how they can contact you or would you like them to email me and then I can forward their questions to you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop in my email address to the chat. You can reach me right here, Neil at, oop, that's actually going straight to Shannon. <laughs> there you go. So you can email me at neil at summerdesign.co. Again, that's .co. Right, so I'll just drop that down and you can please, yeah, definitely email me directly and I'll, I'll do my best to get back to y'all. Um, I feel like I'm going to get a flood of emails, so <laughs> just be patient with me. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so I recorded this so um, everyone who attended will get a copy of the recording so you can review. I know there was a lot covered and it's helpful to see it again. So for sure, at the um, in maybe an hour or two, I'll send an email with the recording link. But um, I just want to say thank you again, Neil. I enjoyed your presentation. I feel like creating a business website right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you again for celebrating uh, San Francisco Small Business Week with us. And um, I'm just really happy. It was such a great week. And I thought this was a perfect ending and, and really enjoyed this. So thank you, Neil. And thank you, everyone, for coming to our program. Thanks, everybody. Excited to see y'all create your own websites. Okay. Bye now. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Neil.